What's up guys, my name is Punch, ow, in the pooper, and welcome back to Higurashi When They Cry. Um, if you're wondering why I'm on the text lock screen, that's because I started it up, and I actually, um, was checking if my mic worked, just to be sure, and I accidentally clicked forward, but we only missed one line of dialogue, which was, dinner was unusually bland. So, last time, in the video that I didn't test out my mic, that I had to record twice. Um, it was a lot of it was Punchy going back to school, um, and Punchy re like really debating inside, uh, like against himself, against his naivety and stuff like that. S to the point where he came to the conclusion that they're trying to kill him. That he has to throw out his like weaker ideas. That they're just like you know like what ha what's happening isn't actually happening. That's like one, what one part of Punchy is trying to do to him. And we haven't, last episode we didn't see Demon, Rena, or Mian. Um, but we did go to school, not really pay attention. And when class was over, we ended up not playing. With like, no, we didn't play any games with the club. We just went straight home. Because mentally, Punchy is pretty darn, he's gone through a lot. Let's just say that. <laughs> Alright, so dinner was unusually bland. It had no flavor or aroma. The miso soup that normally tantalized pe my appetite instead tasted like nothing but boiled water. Dad was eating with us that night. It was a rare occurrence in this household. When he got into his work, he ate and slept on his own schedule. My dad never cared about the time. Since my dad was at the dinner table, it had uh, it either meant he had just reached a good point um, to take a break or he was in the slump. So yeah, he just doesn't understand the motivation creators have. Your partnership was just a verbal agreement, wasn't it? If uh sorry. If it's so hard to agree on things, why not just end it? I feel like it's an industry with a lot of back scratching, but when it gets in the way of business, I wasn't able to pick up pick up much um, of my mom and dad's conversation, but I could tell it wasn't a very pleasant topic. That, of course, made the disgusting food even less appealing. Staring listlessly at the exchange between my parents, my mind wandered off to the same thought processes I had going on all day long. Friends close to me? No. They used to be friends, but I could no longer trust them. Right now, I was greatly lacking at in allies. Yes, but you are. All we really have is Oishi-san. People I trusted, people I could depend on when push came to shove, they were something I just didn't have. Ah, if only we still had Tomatake-san, he would have had our back. Having just one alley would have been incredibly reassuring in the current, currently hopeless situation I was in. I put down my chopsticks and looked over at my parents, who were still talking about work. The first course of action that came to mind was to tell my parents everything. Currently, there wasn't a single person from Hinomazawa I could trust 100%. That meant the only person I could trust were my parents. But if I told them everything that had happened up until now, would they understand? Rena, for example. That neighborly Rena who was so diligent in looking after me, came to get me every day and sometimes brought over a share of what she made. How could I explain that she wanted to kill me? No matter how I explained it, it would probably be difficult for anybody to comprehend. That's true. I understand what Punch is going through. If someone eccentric dad wouldn't understand, my high-strung mom would probably drag me off to a psychiatrist in the blink of an eye. Sadly, that was the amount of trust that existed in our relationship. Oh, poor Punchy. I mean, truthfully, if I heard it, it's something pretty ridiculous. I don't know if I would believe it. But I, I guess that goes to show that, as a parent, even when things are a little weird, you guys just have to support your kids. Get behind them. Even if, they did, if, even if they did come to, to understand, what could they possibly do? Unless they could uncover the truth, they wouldn't be able to protect me. And if they did uncover the truth, they would just become as big, vic as big of a victim and targets as me. No, by informing them of these unnecessary things, I'd be putting my parents in danger as well. Considering that the victims in past incidents were often married couples, I couldn't even joke about it. For the entire Meibara family to have an accident, or to just vanish into thin air, it was easily possible in Hinamazawa. 
What was more important here was that knowing something unnecessary put you in danger. The most unsettling question was, how did they know that I knew? As long as they didn't know, my parents might not fall victim. That was one way to think about it, I guess? At least it was like that in, in, in my case. After I found out, things started becoming odd. In other words, it meant the following. As long as my parents didn't know anything, nothing would happen to them. As long as my parents were here, this house would be a safe haven for them. I knew these were just assumptions based on conjecture on top of conjecture. Wanting this house to be a safe haven, that was the pinnacle of my weak-willed method of thinking, even though everything that's happened to us, or at least the last few things happened to us, happened in our house. So I don't know how much of a safe haven it is. I had to concede that it was not completely safe. Yes, it's not. It was only safer than the outside. I knew that I couldn't rely on my parents. No, I couldn't risk getting my parents involved. Then the only person who could be my, my ally would be Oishi-san, him and him alone. He was the only person who understood the situation I was in. He didn't care so much about my safety, but he was without a doubt passionate about solving this case. It was a bit frustrating. Oishi-san was basically the whole reason I was in this mess. Now to get out of it, I had to rely on him. Meaning, I was, uh, it was all going according to his devices. It was just my job to look advertising while bobbing in the waves as bait. Then, when the fish started gathering around, Oishi-san would pull up the big haul. It was slightly infuriating, but even, but even I thought that was the best course of action. So then, what should I do? Patience was the first rule of fishing. Just keep waiting until the fish actually bites. I don't want the fish to bite though. But I wasn't simply bait. There are lots of ways for me to struggle before being devoured. When they struck, I need to somehow dodge just enough to tag out Oishi-san. No question, it was going to be hard. The timing to bring Oishi-san in would be difficult. He was in the city, not Hinomazawa. So if I phoned him in my moment of need, it would take him about 30 minutes to reach me. So I need to run away for those 30 minutes. For example, if we set up a rendezvous point for dire situations or something, I'd just have to hide out there until Oishi-san had arrived. Okay, I can almost see it now. I was still being chased around in the dark by boogeymen, but now I knew which way to go. I would never have imagined this would be so reassuring. That's what you're supposed to do, Punchy. Like, last episode, you were being such a little bitch, for lack of a better word. It's good to see you planning now. Oh yeah. It would probably be best if I had just concealed weapon for when things got rough. Might be a little, going a little over the edge. Although I guess the needle in the red bean button is clear sign that actually that might be a good idea. Typically, that would call for a switchblade, but that wasn't too reassuring for combat. And also, since it was recognizable as a weapon by the public, that also wasn't good. Really, when the time comes, a long weapon like a bat would work in my favor. I remember there was a metal bat at school. I could be confident with that when push came to shove. If I pretended I wasn't practicing, if I pretended I was practicing my swing, then it wouldn't be suspicious for me to always carry it around. I'm pretty sure once you leave the area, you're not expected to just be, always be carrying a bat. I could go to school early tomorrow and secure it. Just possessing a weapon may be enough to deter them. Also, one more thing, insurance. It could be something like a note or a memo. I could just write down everything that's happened as a sort of journal. In case I suddenly vanish, that journal will be left behind. With my journal in his possession, Oishi-san should be able to avenge my death. I left my parents engrossed in their conversation about work and went back to my room. Ah, <sighs> Punchy has a go-get-him attitude now, which is very comforting to see. I tore out a piece of paper from a notebook and made my way to my desk. Last time, I wrote a journal for, was for summer homework in elementary school. In the off chance something bad happened, the police could use my diary as a lead. I bet they find it. If I do, if I do like follow through with this, me and his stuff, I mean. So I should write. I should only write down the facts. How should I start? I jotted down my thoughts as they came. I, Punchy Mayabara, am in fear for my life. It made me laugh nervously. It was one that showed up often in detective stories. I never even dreamed that I would be in the type of the type of situation where I'd write it myself. 
I do not know why they are after my life. Ren and the others were suspicious, but I had no proof. And that's why I couldn't write anything more. I laughed wryly at myself for writing such a passage draped in mystery. Would the police be able to get the hint from reading this enigmatic passage? I could only pray that they would. What I prayed for the most, though, was that this journal never needed to play its part. Here, I laughed nervously. It was too simple, so I wrote down one more line I just thought of. The only thing I do know is that it has to do with Oyashiro Sama's curse. Was that too much? I probably shouldn't write more than that. If I wrote any more, then it would just seem like I was just delusional. In order to appear to the reader, that the person who had written this was of sound mind, I chose not to write anything else after that, at that point. I just needed to add more as I learned more about the truth. I folded the paper and thought about a place to hide it. While hiding is somewhere obvious, there was a chance that they would have covered it instead. On the other hand, if it was so if it was too obscure of a location, then there was the risk of nobody finding it at all. In the end, I decided to take the clock off my wall and stick the full note in the back of it with scotch tape. After that, I put the clock back in its normal position. Yeah. It didn't look like anything was hidden behind it. Now I need to set up set it up such that if anything happens to me, my parents could find it. Hopefully you have the window closed stop punchy, because last time Randall was right behind the door and they just have to know everything that's happening. So just do your best, Punchy. I looked at it from countless different angles until I was satisfied and I made my way downstairs. My parents were still talking about work. It didn't look like it was going to end anytime soon, so I cut in. Ah, sorry to interrupt. I have something I want to talk to you about. I never started off in a conversation like that before, so my parents were both startled. They stopped talking and turned towards me. What is it, Punchy? I have a favor to ask of you. Please listen. Um, just in case, yeah? If it's not urgent, can we do this later? Right now, Mommy and Daddy have something urgent they're talking about. I didn't think their talk was more urgent than mine in any case. I stated my request. Just in case, okay? If I die... Both my, both my parents' eyes went as wide as saucers. If I die... I want you to put the clock on my wall in my coffin. That's pretty smart. If they did that, then they'd probably find it. My memoir. Both my parents remained wide-eyed, not moving an inch. I couldn't blame them. I made the clock in shop class, and I really like it. So, please. What's the matter? Punchy? Did something happen? Mom finally was able to ask me with a questioning gaze. Of course, this was a normal response for when someone's son suddenly talked about a subject like this. I felt bad about making them worry, but right now I just wanted them to think about the clock in my room. With that awkward mood leaving the room in silence, I decided to go back up to my room. I want to get to school early tomorrow, so I'm going to bed. Good night. Ultra suspicious punchy. We're gonna get an appearance of all of this at this rate. Saying only that, I left the living room. I need to go to school early tomorrow and secure that bat. I should make today the last day I went to school with Rena. As I climbed the stairs, I heard my mom call my name, but I pretended not to hear her. It wasn't something I could talk about with my parents. If I talked about it, it would only make things more dangerous. The fight we hit, the fight that, um, the fight that had begun was mine and mine alone. I couldn't rely on anybody. But if my parents are actually like fighting about this too, like things are happening to them, I wouldn't be killed. Not when I still knew nothing. End of another day, Punchy is getting his um, strategic planning on, which is great. This is what he should be doing. Uh, I think he needs another way to get a weapon than just the bat at school. Alright, got a new tip. Not feeling so hot. Punchy Kun's friends had been feeling down late. Oh, no, wait. Oh, this is Rena talking. This is probably after every after I just left. Punchy Kun's not feeling. Uh, Punchy Kun's ugh, been feeling down lately. Maybe he's in a bad mood. I wonder. Maybe he's on his period. Michan, that's gross. Hyuk, 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 hyuk. 
What do you think? Don't know. Could be that Punchy Chan, maybe? I don't know. That day, Punchy Chan was in that car talking to some tubby middle aged guy, right? Yeah, no mistake. That Oishi, he probably fed him something fishy. He was so serious. Punchy Kun's face was so pale. You see, you might not know this, but he's actually the messenger of Oyashiro sama. How who? Me? Huh? What do you mean? Whenever he shows up, someone is deemed away. Ah, so that's how they see it. Even though there's no such thing as curses, so no lie. Oh? Is that so? The year before last, when Rika-chan's mom drowned, right? Right before that, she was visited by Oishi. Now that you mention it, it happened before Satoshi Kun transferred out. Transferred? <laughs> You're so sweet, Rena. So this time, he appeared before Punchy Kun. So Punchy Kun is going to be demoned away too? If they really felt this way, why did they act so creepy toward me and why did they try to kill me? It doesn't make sense to me. An empty sound hung in the air, and then it was suddenly interrupted by loud laughter. <laughs> what was that about? <laughs> I mean, it seemed like they're. See, it sounded like they're trying to protect me, but I'm pretty sure that's not the case. All right, we're just gonna go a little past chapter ten. See what Punchy's thinking up now. This was the first time I'd ever woken up with such clarity. It was 5:59, just moments before my alarm would go off. At six, Punchy? For actually, never mind. School year starts around seven-ish, right? I was amazed at the precision of my internal clock. I had made preparations for the next day of school before I went to bed. I changed quickly and descended to the deserted lower floor. It appeared that my mom was still asleep. Neither breakfast nor lunch was ready. No immaculate breakfast on our last day. Yesterday, I just unilaterally declared that I would be leaving early today, so it couldn't be helped. I slathered jam on some bread and topped it off with some instant cocoa. Huh. Did I put the cocoa on the jam? That didn't seem very good. Just as I finished up my breakfast, Mom rose groggily from her slumber. My punchy, you're up early. Is this some sort of school event? Not really. Answering bluntly, I picked up my bag and stood after stuffing two slices of bread down my throat. You're leaving already? What about lunch? If you don't wait a bit, if you if you don't wait a bit, I can't make it. If I waited for her to make my lunch, then it would end up being the same time as usual. If I did that, it'd raise chances of me running into Ren and Mian on the way. Yes, from today onwards, I'm going to school alone. I'll be fine for today. Then what will you do for lunch? I'll sit down and buy some bread or something at the store. Really? I need some lunch money. Be sure to bring me back the receipt. I took the thousand yen bill from mom and slipped it into my pocket. It's pretty early. Is Renachan up at this early as well? No, just me. Did you tell Rena that you're leaving early? I have no reason to tell her every little detail now, do I? Finding it difficult answering the onslaught of questions, I made an annoyed face. Tell Rena that I went ahead when she comes. Now we're just making things more... We're just wearing a mom even more. She's gonna tell Rena that I'm acting weird, and Rena's gonna be like, Punchy, why are you acting weird with her demon face? Hey, hey, Punchy, wait! It's not that I didn't trust my parents, I just couldn't rely on them. Kind of the same thing, isn't it? They couldn't help me. I could only hope that they didn't get involved. It was safer that way. My mom's knowing voice cut off by the slam of the door. For the first time since I moved here, I headed down the road to the school alone. And there's me walking. Up until now, I had always walked on the same path at the same time each day. So I always met with the same people at the same places. But today was different. I didn't meet the people I would normally, and nobody was at the places where I would have normally met them. Of course, Rena wasn't the spot where we usually met, and there wasn't anyone at the spot where we would have met up with Mian. The length of the trees, shadows, the morning air, and the brightness of the sun. It was completely different. It was a completely different type of morning than I, from what I was used to. Without a doubt, it felt strange. 
It left me with the impression that I destroyed the illusion of Hinamazawa set up for me before it had enough time to prepare all the props needed to deceive me. My punchy kun, you're so early today. Is everyone meeting early this morning? The person who called to me was someone who always passed by as they were taking a walk along the edge of the fields. The name was, uh, I forgot. Of course, this wasn't the spot where we usually passed each other. I woke up early today, so I thought it would be a good change of pace. That's all. I threw out a random excuse. What about Ren and Chan and me and Chan? Are you all by yourself today? Well, yeah. I was being asked the same type of questions my mom was asking. So I answered them in the same uninterested, uninteresting vague manner. It wasn't funny being asked where Ren uh, was each time I passed by someone. But by it, maybe it was to be expected. It was because for so long we were always together so amicably. I am me, probably. Yes, whatever. Even I felt even I felt that if I let my guard down, we could still be fret Stop it, Punchy. Don't think about that anymore. You spent all day yesterday thinking about how dangerous it was to go soft, didn't you? Good man. Boop beep. Beep beep beep. The car blared out from nowhere. Even though I was walking, lost in thought, the horn was way too close. A mechanical behemoth barreled at me from behind, catching me completely off guard. Whoa! By the time I turned around, the van's hulking chases, chases, chases was almost on top of me. I'd seen plenty of cars veer to the opposite shoulder to avoid pedestrians, but this car was doing the the opposite. It felt like, it felt like there's somebody. It felt like there was somebody on the opposite shoulder, and the van was swerving in my direction to avoid them. That blissful, ignorant train of thought had delayed me from realizing something much, much more important. That large mass was hurtling right at me! And cue creepy music. Was it going to hit me? The inside of my head instantly flooded with a painfully cold liquid. In that moment, the scene before me, no. Time itself had frozen. Ugh! Oh. Jesus Christ, Punchy. I was gonna be ready for like when they showed up and stuff, but... In the silence of that frozen moment, I compared the van, so close that I had no way to dodge it, and my body, the upper half, twisted awkwardly in order to look behind me. There was no way I could dive out of the way in my current position. If I lost focus now, this moment would unpause, and I would probably be plowed over, caught in the silly pose. Bend my upper body towards the paddy by the side of the road. If I bent it far enough, I'd get away with just being hit by the side view mirror. As soon as the thought crossed my mind, the temporal stasis was shattered by the deafening sound of the van. The side mirror struck my shoulder, sending me spinning off through that the air like a top, locked in my contorted position. Flick a splash. Stum sent tumbling through the air, I crashed to the muddy paddy by the side of the road. My entire body was soiled and drenched, but the choice I'd made in the instant was unmistakably for the best. I was covered in mud, but when the alternative was being hit by the car, it was close as I could to being unscathed. Rising out from the paddy, I had enough time for me to glare over the stopped van and yell profanities at the driver. I'm not sure if he was able to see me, but the van sped off suddenly. Wait, damn it! This is what they call a hit and run, wasn't it? I couldn't help but continue yelling out profanities. The disgrace from being covered in mud hurt me more than any physical wounds. I slacked through the muddy paddy and made my way back onto the road. Okay, I think cutting it there is fine. We just got hit by a driver who... If this was really... If this was Hinamazawa... I don't think they would have, you know, hit and run us. I think by since they know us by sight, they would have actually um like stopped and said something. Unless I'm already the target of everyone from Hinamazawa, then then we should just start expecting these things. But good job on Punchy for dodging that. Alright guys, we're just gonna cut it there. I, I can't record much more tonight. But thanks for watching guys. I hope you guys are doing well. Um I'm also Starting to record another um, thing. It's called I forgot honestly forgot what it's called, but it's like a, it's a JRPG. Um, I tried recording it, but um, like the video was off for some reason, so I gotta figure that out. But I hope you guys will check that out too, and hopefully you like it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good night, day when you're watching this, maybe. Um, and please like and subscribe. Bye-bye.